Are you buying an Arduino Uno Rev3? Or maybe you already have one, but you're not sure if it's the right board for your project? In this video, you're going to learn everything you need to know about the Arduino Uno R3. We'll talk about the pinout, the specifications that actually matter, how the Arduino Uno R3 stacks up against other development boards, but most importantly, at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you exactly why you should or should not buy the Arduino Uno R3. My name is Mike Chage. I'm the author of the Arduino Book for Beginners and the owner of Programming Electronics Academy, where for the last 10 years, I've been helping folks learn to program and build with Arduino. Real quick before we start, if you're looking for an Arduino board for your project and you want to make sure you get the right one, make sure to check out this Arduino buying guide. I have outlined a bunch of questions that you should be asking of your Arduino board before you make your purchase. There is also a huge list of boards that you can compare side by side. You can get this guide for free down in the link in the description or from this QR code right here. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this Arduino Uno R3. The Arduino Uno R3 is legendary among Arduino boards. In fact, it's defined an entire family of Arduino boards, namely the Uno family, which all share a similar shape, also known as its footprint. Now, the processor on the Arduino Uno R3 is the 8-bit Atmel ATmega 328P. It operates at a speed of 16 megahertz which puts it in the lowest end for most Arduino boards out there. The ATmega 328P has 32 kilobytes of flash memory, two kilobytes of SRAM, and one kilobyte of EEPROM, which puts this microcontroller on the lowest end of memory for most Arduino boards out there. Now you might be thinking, why the heck would I get an Arduino Uno Rev3 if it's the slowest board out there and it hardly has any memory? Well, stick around and you'll see why it may be the perfect board for your project. Now let's go ahead and talk about the pinout of the Arduino Uno Rev3. When I say pinout, I'm talking about the small holes on the periphery of the board. Each of these holes, which collectively are known as the headers, are electrically connected to different microcontroller pins on the board. Now the pins on a microcontroller have different functions, but most of them are for inputting and outputting a voltage signal. The most general purpose pins are called the GPIO, or General Purpose Input Output. The Arduino Uno R3 has a total of 20 GPIO. 14 of these are labeled as digital pins, and 6 of them are analog pins, which connect to the analog to digital converter, or ADC. Of the 14 digital pins, six of those can be used to generate PWM outputs, that is pulse width modulation. They are annotated by a little squiggly line next to the pin number. So you can kind of think of the digital pins like on off switches that can either read higher low voltages or supply a higher low voltage, while the analog pins allow you to read a continuous voltage signal anywhere between zero and five volts. A pin that can do PWM can allow you to output an apparent voltage between 0 and 5 volts. That can be really useful when you're controlling motors. The Arduino Uno R3 also has two pins that can be set as hardware interrupts. They are pins 2 and 3. These interrupt pins allow you to execute some specific code immediately if the state of the pin changes. Now, generally speaking, you don't want to blow up your Arduino board or fry it like an egg, although I'm sure it can be kind of fun at times. So it is important that we cover some of the limits of this Arduino Uno R3. Now, this can be a little bit technical, but these details can be the difference between having your microcontroller run for years or even decades or just failing after a couple of uses. So let's first talk about current limits for the pins. So as you likely know, Current is the flow of electrons through a circuit. When current flows, some of its energy is converted into heat due to the resistance in the circuitry. If too much current flows in a circuit, it can actually create enough heat that will damage the internals of the microcontroller or other components on the board. And this is why adhering to these current limits is important. So each of the GPIO pins has a recommended current limit of 20 milliamps of current with a 40 milliamp absolute maximum rating. 
So what can you do with 20 milliamps? Well, it's enough to turn on an LED pretty bright and allow you to make a buzzer to make annoying beeps, but really not much more than that. And that's because the GPIO on a microcontroller are meant to control different peripherals, not provide the current to operate them. In addition to these individual pin current limits, there's actually some more limits. We're really diving into the weeds here, but these are somewhat important to know if you're going to have a bunch of I.O. hooked up to your Arduino Uno Rev3. So each of the pins belongs to what is called a port, lettered B, C, and D. And there is a per port current limit as well. You'll want to refer to the data sheet for the specifics here, but roughly speaking, it's about 100 milliamps of current total per port for sinking voltage and 150 milliamps per port when you're sourcing voltage. There's also a 200 milliamp current limit for the entire chip itself, which includes the current that's being used by the ATmega328P and any pin current that you might be sinking or sourcing. So how can you power this Arduino Uno R3? Well, the Arduino Uno R3 operates at 5 volts. You can power it directly with a USB cable. And you'll notice the USB connection is pretty beefy on the Arduino Uno R3. And that's because it is an B-type USB connection, like what used to be common for printers of ye olden days. You can also power it using a barrel jack, and it's recommended you supply between 7 and 12 volts, but it can actually take in as low as 6 all the way up to 20 volts. Now, instead of the barrel jack, you can also supply the same voltage supply to the V in pin. So you might have noticed that there's not too much special about this Arduino Uno R3. It's one of Arduino's oldest microcontroller development boards, and it's at the bottom of the lineup when it comes to performance and memory. It can't natively connect to Wi-Fi or Bluetooth like many other Arduino boards can nowadays. So it might come as a surprise to you that the Arduino Uno Rev3 continues to be the widest used Arduino board out there. Now, here's why. The basic use case for a microcontroller is to read some input, perform a basic logical operations or multiple of them, and then create a corresponding output. The Arduino Uno Rev3 does exactly this with no frills. So for so many projects that people are building, they just need this basic functionality. So why should you buy an Arduino Uno Rev3? Well, if you have a project that needs basic functionality, then the Arduino Uno R3 is a great option. It's compatible with tons of existing hardware within the Arduino ecosystem, including shields and sensors. If you plan to interface with components that require 5 volt logic, then it's a very convenient choice. But probably the most important thing is that there are more examples and tutorials online covering the Arduino Uno Rev3 than any other Arduino board on the market. This is simply not the case for many other newer Arduino boards. So when you get stuck, which is bound to happen, and you need a place to turn, you will always find lots of resources talking about the Arduino Uno Rev3. Now to get an idea of what this board can do, check out some of these projects. This is a retro Pong game. Here is a spaceship. Now before we dive into why you shouldn't buy an Arduino Uno Rev3, I want to remind you that if you're trying to figure out which Arduino board is best for your project, but you're not even sure you know the right questions to ask, then you can download our Arduino buying guide. Not only will it give you clarity on how to choose a board, but it's going to give you a ton of different boards that you can compare side to side. You can get your copy in the description below or at this QR code right here. All right, so why shouldn't you buy an Arduino Uno Rev3? Well, if your project requires Wi-Fi or BLE connection to send or receive data to the web, then an Arduino Uno Rev3 is probably not the best choice. There are Wi-Fi shields and BLE shields that enable wireless connectivity, but in an age where so many microcontroller development boards natively support BLE and Wi-Fi, it really doesn't make too much sense. Now, if you need to fit your project in a really small enclosure, then the Arduino Uno Rev3 may not be the best option. It's about a mid-size range among Arduino boards, but there are much smaller ones that are available. 
If you need your computer to recognize your project as a human interface device, or HID, when you connect it to your computer, like it would a mouse or keyboard, the Arduino Uno Rev3 is not natively designed for this, so it would not be a good option. If your project needs to reference lots of static data, like lookup tables or long strings of text, then you might be running up against the memory limits of the Arduino Uno Rev3. If your project will be running Edge AI algorithms or other fancy math requiring lots of data manipulation and high speeds, the memory and speed of the Arduino Rev3 is likely going to be insufficient. If your project requires lots of input and output, then while the Arduino Uno Rev3 is about average when it comes to pin count, there are other boards on the market that are just as capable or more capable that have far more GPIO available. If you're thinking about buying the Arduino Uno Rev3, which could be a fantastic choice for your project, you might also want to consider the Arduino Uno Rev4. You can learn all about the Rev4 in this video right here. It's going to help you make a great comparison. This video right here.